for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We don't just want to remove Dan Guttler. We want to remove the system that creates the Dan Guttlers where a 24-year-old can show up in the Congo, access the elites, uh, the bourgeoisie in the DRC, be able to get access to the land where people live and the people who are the indigenous of the land do not benefit from it, but an Israeli businessman is able to get Mossad at his side, is able to get the US government at his side and make all these dealings for decades. That's what we want to stop. Not just Gutler, but completely eradicate the uh, capitalist system, this vicious uh, capital system with no moral dispossessing Congolese from their land and resources. <music>
and the OC partner is Dan Gutler. This was um, confirmed through um, a, a newspaper that they, they contacted the Justice Department and they were able to confirm that these officials were indeed um, the people that I just mentioned. But in that appendix, he actually had dates and amount of transfer, of funds transfer to the bank account, proving that Hakshif bribed politicians with the dealings that they had with Dan Gutler. Of course, Dan Gutler has denied um, many charges. So far, for the, the specific case of Hakshif, uh, well, we've been encouraging Congolese uh, that they should contact the Justice Department and we should file suit against Dan Gutler uh, for his dealings. So that's one case. He's allowed uh, some support to the regime to stay in power. So when um, Trump put the sanctions, it was to signal in 2017 to Joseph Kabila that he should not run for a third term. That was one of the biggest contentions of Congolese elections. Will Joseph Kabila, uh, Kabila stay in power? And strategically, the US government used uh, sanctions to rein him in because they, they felt in the US interest, they needed to be uh, a new wave of leaders in, in the DRC. So at some point, Congolese interest, US interest kind of collided, but mainly Iran mining interest, that's US interest. That wasn't necessarily, we wanted a free and fair demo, uh, democratic elections. That's not also what took place. Um, but uh, we had the election in 2018, uh, Felix Chisekedi uh, was declared the winner of the election. Um, the election now, we all know, uh, was rigged. Um, there was a secret deal between Joseph Kabila and the current president, Felix Chisekedi, in front of um, officials from Kenya, Egypt, and South Africa. Uh, that we know now. But after um, 2018, uh, there was not much traction. Uh, what we realized was that uh, Dan Gutler hired a lobby firm. Uh, he hired a lobbyist in Washington. Particularly, uh, what's interesting, his lawyer uh, lobbying for him, uh, lobbying in uh, the US administration, was the same uh, lawyer that Donald Trump also used for his um, impeachment trial. So he was able, in some shape or form, uh, get the US to listen to his demand. So in the last days of Donald Trump, on January 15th, the Trump administration removed the sanction, which surprised everyone. What is going on? There is a Joe Biden has been declared. We know the elections in the United States in, tw uh, in uh, 2020, before he's actually able to be sworn in on January 15th. The sanctions are removed and no one to be found about why this is unfolding. You can contact the treasury uh, um, department. No one is clearly explaining how did this happen. Uh, so there was an outcry uh, from civil society organizations and uh, watchdogs uh, in the West and also in the DRC. And in March, uh, the Biden administration reinstated uh, the sanctions. Uh, but we, we need to be clear what this means, because one we say there is a Trump versus Biden. Biden is the great president who supports democracy and has uh, in his cabinet, in his agenda, that he will fight corruption. To me, be Trump or Biden, it's around U.S. interests. We really have to decipher what actually unfolded. Dan Gertler clearly has friends in high places who were able to come rescue him when he faced sanctions in 2017. From officials in the US administration to the Israeli intelligence agency Mossad, Gertler was able to rally powerful allies to speak on his behalf. All of this begs the question, who is Gertler and what is his history in the DRC? Beyond his lawyer, who was a, a lobbyist, beyond Dan Gertler's lawyers, you also had Mossad directors pressuring the U.S. government. And that's what worries me. You know, whenever I'm reading in the New York Times that the um, Mossad officials are contacting 
the U.S. administration, stating that he is actually an asset to U.S. and Israeli interest in Central Africa and Africa as a whole. And I'm wondering, who is this Israeli citizen who can have Mossad speak on their behalf? Mossad is an intelligence service. Why is Dan Gutler so essential to intelligence uh, agencies, um, particularly the one in the United States and um, the one in Israel? So that, that was one thing that took me back. The second one is the history of Dan Gutler. The New York Times expose showed us that this Israeli citizen, a former Israeli Defense Force soldier, was the Congolese ambassador at large, a Congolese diplomat. He was sent by Joseph Kabila as a, an ambassador of the DRC to the White House, like a special envoy to the White House, to discuss Congolese issues, opening up US administration to the interest of um, the DRC, particularly of Joseph Kabila. He was successful at that. He was able to get a response from Condoleezza Rice. And then uh, Joseph Kabila came to Washington, D.C., was able to meet with George Bush as well. Uh, there is a famous video of George Bush and um, Joseph Kabila where George Bush is being, uh, is praising uh, Joseph Kabila for elections that know how he was able to organize free and fair elections in, 20, uh, in 2006. But when people see that in the media, they don't understand the work that goes in the background. So that's something also to, to think about. But his history now in the Congo. Then Gertler came in the DRC in 1997 at the age of 24. Just you know, as he finishes a three-year um, military service in the Israeli Defense Force. So a 24-year-old Israeli shows up in 1997 in the DRC, focus on trying to get uh, deals around diamonds, uh, because I think his family members or his grand, uh, gr grandfather, uh, he's the founder of the Israeli uh, Diamond Exchange. And he had some interest around uh, also diamonds. So as he came to Congo, he became very close with Joseph Kabila, whom at that time, in, in 1997, was uh, also 25 years old. So you have a 24-year-old Israeli connecting with a 25-year-old former rebel, uh, Joseph Kabila, who then introduced him to Laurent Desiree Kabila, the president at the time. There is a war on, unfolding in 1998. There is a process where, because of the war, Congo is receiving some sanctions around arms. So they are not able to buy arms. Then Gertler is able to facilitate purchase of arms through contacts that he has in Israel. And Laurent Desiree Kabila is able to get these, uh, these weapons. Through now his affiliation with Laurent Kabila, and then of course in 2001, Laurent Kabila is assassinated and Joseph Kabila in a, what I call the military coup becomes the president of, uh, of the Congo in 2001. Why do I call it a military coup? Congo is not a monarchy. When the president dies, the son of the president has not become the president. So he became the president. It's clear that this was a military coup. So as Joseph Kabila now takes power in 2001, since Joseph Kabila was very close to him, many of the shady mining deals start going through Dan Gertler. It's been documented by RAID. Um, there are reports from uh, United Nations uh, reports where they show also the, the weapons trade. And if you just look at face value, some of the mining deals where, uh, in the case of the tanker mining deal, where that, that deal was uh, for $50 million to many different mergers from Tanker Minding to London, London, London uh, the Canadian firm connecting with the US firm uh, Freeport for a joint project. Then at the time, got access to the larger copper reserve, a copper reserve in the world, the Tekken Fungurume mine. And this mine you know, acquired a $50 million 
was sold uh, to Chinese uh, mining companies uh, recently in tunes of billions of dollars from $15 million. So you see that this practice has gone on and on about getting uh, mining co companies a penny on the dollar and reselling it. But then when you get the proceeds of the resale, funnel it to corrupt government officials who are able to commit mass human rights violation in DRC and so on. But what does that tell us? Dan Gertler has been operating for over two decades. The information about Dan Gertler dealings in DRC is not new. It's been known since the early 2000s. He was never stopped for his dealings. There will be reports after reports. There is a concerted effort to stop him now. It is a path a, in the right direction. I support that he should be held accountable. But the question that everyone has to ask themselves is, when Dan Gertler goes away, who's the new Dan Gertler? Because also Dan Gertler didn't operate by himself, right? Benny Steinmans was being already tried and found guilty for corrupt deals in uh, other African countries, was operating with him in the ORC. In the ORC today, Dan Gertler is still operating. Just lately, that the, uh, there was a leaked information by Congolese whistleblower about Afriland, a bank in the ORC, where after sanctions, he was, uh, Dan Gertler was still able to use a bank to be able to move money. So that was disclosed. So in the DRC, there is nothing, no pressure whatsoever to hold him accountable, right? And he just created a company to try to counter this whole narrative that he is a bad person and so on. And he has a PR video. As a Congolese watching that video, I felt insulted. In the video, he explains how he's able to, uh, you know, he started a new company. He would like Congolese to invest into this company. It's a cobalt company. He feels the future of the, um, the world is really going to be around uh, cobalt and lithium, right? Congo has both cobalt and lithium. So he's encouraging Congolese to invest in this company. And he says something very disturbing in the video. He says, and he feels like he's Congolese. He's been in the Congo since the 1997. So he said, I feel like a Congolese. Then I said, what is the type of arrogance that this Israeli Defense Force individual has to say that he feels like he's Congolese when he's screwing the Congolese, doing a video about how he's going to screw them more, asking them to join the, com uh, the, the company, and then say, I'm a Congolese. Can you imagine if Patrice Lumumba was alive today and could hear an Israeli defense force who's screwing Congo with his minerals say, I am a Congolese, what he will do? The speech we heard in, in June 30th of Patrice Lumumba that's, is just gives us an indication of why we are fighting for a new Congo. We are fighting for a new Congo because we want to control our affairs. We want to control our land and resources, not having people with shady deals. So that's one aspect of uh, the sanction. The second one that was disturbing uh, that I want to point out in the sanction is that the US sanctions list his passport. Dan Gertler is traveling around the world with a Congolese passport. How did he acquire this passport? Is he a Congolese citizen? Is he not a Congolese citizen? If he's a Congolese citizen and he's committing all these crimes, why is he not held accountable? If he's a foreign citizen in the Congo with a fake passport, why is he not held accountable? But, we, but he has a Congolese passport. So why does it take so long to hold people who are exploiting the DRC accountable? That brings us now to the world of today. Dan Gertler, through the Nicanor deal, was able to uh, get the Nicanor deal um, to be merged with Glencore, the Swiss mining uh, firm. Right? Glencore, run by the South African Glassenberg, 
very close to Ramaphosa in South Africa, um, has a huge stake in DRC for cobalt. Cobalt is essential to the functioning of modern -day technology, particularly electric vehicles. Glencore today has a deal with Tesla. So Tesla sources is cobalt from Glencore. So what is the problem with that? The company is supposed to make royalty payments to Dan Gutler. And they were able to pay him 2.5% of royalties from that deal, right? They have the cobalt, they're exploiting it, getting it to the market and selling it to the clients, one of them, Tesla. The worst pressure on Glencore to not pay Dan Gutter because it was under sanctions, but they still did. So to circumvent the sanctions, they paid him in euros. So Glencore is aware that there are sanctions. Glencore is aware that um, of the shady deals that exist. Anyone can read the Justice Department um, the judgments where Hak Schiff pleaded guilty and show how the, um, they bribe Congolese politicians uh, to get the mining uh, deals in the RC. And there are many other reports that exist from the United Nations report to raising accountability in development reports and so on. So they are very well aware of this, yet decide to continue to pay a corrupt business uh, person and making sure that Congo's minerals end up in the Tesla vehicles, in the Tesla batteries for the homes. So that's the culture that we want to stop. We don't just want to remove Dan Gutler. We want to remove the system that creates the Dan Gutlers, where a 24-year-old can show up in the Congo, access the elites, uh, the bourgeoisie in the DRC, be able to get access to the land where people live and the people who are the indigenous of the land do not benefit from it, but an Israeli businessman is able to get Mossad at his side, is able to get the US government at his side and make all these dealings for decades. That's what we want to stop. Not just Gutler, but completely eradicate the uh, capitalist system, this vicious, uh, capital system with no moral dispossessing Congolese from their land and resources. And as I always say, I know we'll be victorious. I know that we have to continue to educate the people around what's happening in the DRC so that people know what is happening and know that we Congolese are now remaining silent when this is happening and we are calling on the people of the world to join us in our just and victorious fight that we are going to succeed in years come.